Hola amigos! Welcome to another episode of the Top 10 Favorite and from what I believe are the best performances of some of the greatest actors of all time. I'm starting from 10 and then working my way up to number 1 and yes of course ladies and gentlemen I have seen every film of these artists so rest assured these lists come from pure passionate accuracy. Once again I only cover artists who are no longer with us sadly so Artists who are still in the game, working, I won't be covering because their next performance could absolutely be outstanding. God, I hope so. Today I'll be covering one of the most underrated and brilliant actors ever. Raul Julia. Raul Julia was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and he was proud of it. As he should, because he had wonderful parents who inspired him to be proud of his native culture. He started in music, but soon his love for theater increased. He has graced the stage with amazing portrayals, most notably as Mac the Knife in the revival of the Three Penny Opera in 1976. As Charlie in the comedy Where's Charlie in 1974. As Proteus in a revival of The Two Gentlemen of Verona in 1972. And as Guido Contini in one of my personal favorite musicals, Nine, in 1982. All four of these productions I just mentioned, he was nominated for the Tony Award for Best Actor. Oh, and let's not forget his other epic stage portrayals as Dracula, Don Quixote in Man of La Mancha, Edmund in King Lear, and as Petruchio in The Taming of the Shrew, opposite Meryl Streep in the late 1970s among many, many others. That alone leaves him an inspiration to me because he kept his Puerto Rican accent, which was really taboo. No one of South American descent were ever really given many opportunities in classic leading roles like these. I mean, at this time, you could really look at Anthony Quinn, Jose Ferrer as one of the leading examples, right? But Raul Julia just exploded on the scene with that confidence and breath of life that no one could deny him. When it came to film, of course, he had his fair share of playing Puerto Rican punks, but he always had that strength and presence that made him stand out. It was in no time that he was getting media roles and his star power was beginning to shine. I am very, very excited to get started, so let's get going, guys, on the top 10 best performances in film by the flamboyant and lovely Raul Julia. Starting off at number 10, we have Onassis, the richest man in the world. This was a made-for-TV film telling the true story of the rise to power for Aristotle Onassis, who was at one point the richest man in the world. He gained his fortune through building up many freighters and tankers expanding to 70 vessels for shipping purposes, starting from the early 40s. Raul Julia is pretty low-key in the role of Arionasis, but he is nonetheless compelling as the Greek tycoon, who at first we understand his vision for more in life based on where he came from, and wants to run from the poverty of which he was brought up in. But then, like most businessmen, where it's completely all business, his relationship with his loved ones fall apart. It's very much a Scarface-like story. Just take out the crazy violence in Al Pacino. And you have Raul Julia giving us a charming and focused performance here. Number 9. Tequila Sunrise. This was one of the first movies I ever saw of Raul Julia, funny enough. I was a big Kurt Russell fan as a kid. What am I talking about? I still am. And then I see Raul Julia pop up as Mel Gibson's drug dealer contact and friend, Carlos. If you've seen the film, it's really good. It's written and directed by Robert Town, who wrote the classic Chinatown. And Raul Julia, to me, is the shining star of this fun, erotic action film. There's a classic scene where he and Mel Gibson are drunk and shooting the breeze on a yacht. And Raul Julia is sitting up on a table singing opera while smoking. It's one of the more soothing and yet chilling moments because we know how crazy this character is but he has such a class about him that reminds us why we like some gangsters in the movies number eight street fighter 
Yes, oh yes, one of the better video game movies ever made, which you don't ever really hear that, do you? And to be quite honest, that's not saying much. <laughs> Based on the arcade game, which I remember playing as a kid, the plot, uh, if you can call it that, Jean-Claude Van Damme plays a colonel and takes his army to the country of Shadaloo to rescue POWs, among other hostages, from the evil General Bison, played with such flamboyance and glee by Raul Julia. Raul Julia is the only amazing thing about this movie, period. He only took this role of General Bison because his kids were big fans of the video game, and he thought maybe this would be fun for them. And hey, Mr. Julia, it was fun for all of us. I can remember even as a kid just being wowed by his Shakespearean deliveries. Anytime it would cut back to Van Damme, I was inclined to fast forward to the next scene with Julia. Raul Julia modeled his performance after famous dictators such as Mussolini and Stalin, and even framed his character like Richard III. Of course, Raul Julia would give such meticulous research to his roles, because he was an artist. And it's because of that discipline and dedication that every scene he's in, he is just magnetic. He was really the only praise critics gave to the film itself, which was unfortunately one of the many that was his last. There is a beautiful dedication to him before the closing credits that says, For Raul, vaya con Dios. Number seven, Moon Over Parador. Talk about a slightly underrated political comedy, written and directed by Paul Mazursky. It stars Richard Dreyfus as a frustrated actor who is filming a movie in the fictional country Parador, where the president, dictator of Parador, is very amused that Dreyfus can do an impression of him very, very well. Oh, and how lovely that they look exactly alike. Crazy. Raul Julia plays the president's advisor, his right-hand man, who lets the dictator die of a heart attack because he was going to be fired. He then grabs Dreyfus and forces him to play the role of the president so he can keep his position in power. This is good fun. I remember first seeing this on Comedy Central actually years ago, way back in the day, and I was very pumped because I was like, whoa, a blonde-haired Raul Julia, this is awesome. I watched it and was just so enamored with Raul Julia's Golden Globe nominee performance here as Roberto. The scenes between he and Dreyfus are just so fun. And you just see how Julia just relishes the evilness behind playing Roberto. Their banter back and forth almost reminded me of a gangster comedy back in the 30s. The whole cast is fantastic too, especially Dreyfus and Sonia Braga. But to me, Julia definitely steals the show here. Number six, Tempest. A modernized and quite original adaptation of Shakespeare's The Tempest. Again, adapted and directed by Paul Mazursky with John Cassavetes playing Prospero, or in this case, Philip. The modernized version has Philip being a middle-aged architect in New York City. Finding out his wife is having an affair with his boss, jumps ship and moves to Athens, Greece with his daughter Miranda, where he's continuing his midlife crisis. Julia plays Calabanos, which in the original play is Caliban, a half-deformed, quote-unquote, monster of the character. He was the only resident on the island until Philip shows up and just takes over. To gain revenge on Philip, he plans to take his daughter away and plot to murder him. Quite a bit accurate to the play. <laughs> the movie itself is very slow and it can be boring at times, but Raul Julia's Golden Globe nominee performance again as Calabanos is very, very exciting. Raul Julia just has an amazing background in Shakespeare, so his actions and movement as Caliban is so great to see. If anything, this film is absolutely worth seeing for Cassavetes, Susan Sarandon, Jenna Rollins, Molly Ringwald, and of course, Raul Julia. Number five, Romero. Raul Julia gives such a powerful performance as real life Salvadoran Archbishop Oscar Romero during the horrendous guerrilla uprising in El Salvador. Oscar Romero is a priest who begins the peaceful protest to stop the oppression of the people. The Vatican appoints him as Archbishop to hopefully not have him cross the military again. But Oscar Romero was a man of the people, and he will defend his country of El Salvador with whatever it takes. 
This film is meant to be seen 100%. It did not do well at the box office, but thank goodness for video releases and streaming services, so this can be seen all over the world. Raul Julia took this role very, very seriously. Of course, his family had said these kind of projects he was willing to do for free because of the impact it could make, and he gives it his all. His performance in this film is 100% Oscar worthy, as far as I'm concerned. If you haven't seen this film, I won't spoil it for you, but I highly recommend watching it just for Julia's performance here. Number four, Adam's Family Values. Did I mention earlier that these top five were incredibly difficult to rank? But this was my first discovery of Raul Julia as the beloved and wild Gomez Adams. There are times, honestly, where I love this film more than the first installment. Mainly, it's because you can see and feel that the writers were having way more fun the second time around, not to take the characters too, too seriously. And once again, everyone shines in their respective roles. And oh my God, Raul Julia just knocks it out so willingly. He's more maniacal, more comedic, more dramatic. And by all means, you absolutely believe him. If you don't know the whole story, the Adams family are now giving birth to a brand new addition, little Pubert, with his already grown in thin mustache. <laughs> Wednesday and Pugsley are fatally jealous, and so by the firm suggestion of their new nanny, played by Joan Cusack, Gomez and Morticia send the kids to summer camp, and even more fun commences. There are so many memorable scenes here. Uncle Fester gets forced by the nanny to get married, where she has murderous plans of her own. And the Adams family goes straight to the police to rescue him. And oh my God. Has the planet gone mad? My brother, passion's hostage. I seek justice. Denied. Oh, so good. Definitely add this to your Halloween list yearly. It's one of the best sequels. Honestly, one of the best sequels ever made. Number three, why it's the Adams Family, the very first one. Okay, this was really the first film I ever discovered of Raul Julia. <laughs> he is just truly, truly masterful, magnificent, charming, seductive, flamboyant, electric, and so damn funny as Gomez Adams. He's the best Gomez there ever was. As much as I do love John Aston as Gomez Adams from the TV show, Raul Julia just adds another layer to him, making him not 100% a cartoon, even though the story itself is oddball and ridiculous. But yet, it's much more than that. It's creepy, and it's kooky. Mysterious and spooky. It's all together ooky. The Adams Family. Sorry, I couldn't help it. This film did not receive many good reviews when it came out, mainly because it was taking itself too seriously, which I understand, and I can see that for sure, but yet I love the more serious parts, because again, they were doing something original as a full-length film. It's always hard adapting a TV show for film, and as long as you have gifted and strong actors, like these films do, then you have nothing to worry about. With a serious subplot involving Uncle Fester here, there are so many beautiful things about it. The moment when supposedly Fester returns home after 25 years, Gomez's face showing such tenderness on top of the hilarious auction scene bidding on their own item, they're auctioning. I always find myself quoting him all the time. Dirty fool, old man. Gomez, why don't we take the family out for a drive? A drive? And Miss Gilligan? I love Raul Julia here, and if you have not seen these Adams Family films, please, please forget all about the new animated films. They're horrible. And see this one instead. You will not regret it. Number two, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Oh my god, this is one of the most beautiful films. I have ever seen. It is extremely significant as being one of the more major films to be honored at the Academy Awards that was made by a mostly all Hispanic and black cast and crew. Based on the novel and then later a play, it tells a story of two prisoners who couldn't be more opposite, imprisoned together in a cell in Brazil 
during the military dictatorship. Raul Julia plays Valentin, one of the prisoners, who has been tortured for his actions of moving a revolutionary rebellion against the occupation. And then you have Louis Molina, played by William Hurt, an effeminate homosexual who's in prison for having sex with a minor boy. Molina tries to connect with Valentin, but Valentin is very much against Molina's way of life, calling him very offensive things and wants nothing to do with him. But since he has no choice, they're in the same cell together, he lets Molina comfort him with recounting a classic 1940s romance film, which is actually a Nazi propaganda film. Through the course of the film, they start to develop such a deeper understanding of each other. And maybe, just maybe, they can help each other move forward in life and seek redemption. I won't spoil the whole story because this is yet another film you absolutely need to experience. It's an actor's movie, for sure, because it is such a character study. But there are more messages and themes that make such an impact to the newest modern viewer. This film came out in 1985, and it has not at all lost any of its power, thanks to the powerful and hypnotizing performances of William Hurt and Raul Julia. Fun fact, when they were rehearsing on set, Hurt and Raul Julia were having more connection issues as their characters. So they tried a classic experiment of switching roles where Julia was Molina and Hurt was Valentin. And the director even said, oh my God, like this works wonderfully. But they switched back to their original roles. But that experiment helped them connect so much more. William Hurt won the Academy Award for Best Actor for this film. And I agree, Raul Julia should have been nominated right alongside him. His performance is still regarded as one of the most inspirational performances for Hispanic audiences during a time when Hispanics were not given this much credibility and quality three-dimensional leading roles. God bless Raul Julia for his work here. Now, here are just a couple of honorable mentions. Mac the Knife, which is a film version of the Three Penny Opera, which Julia reviving his Mac Heath. I gotta be honest here. The film itself falls flat. It does not work at all as a whole. It's a big disappointment. But what does work beautifully is Raul Julia as Mac the Knife. Damn, can he be menacing. Death Scream, which don't let the title fool you. This was a made-for-TV film starring Raul Julia as a detective in New York City trying to solve the mystery of a murdered girl who had dozens of witnesses who heard her screaming in the midst of her being killed, but not one of them want to help or cooperate with the police. What are they hiding? Dun dun dun! This is significant because this came out in 1975 when Julia was barely known, and he completely leads the story with such energy. He's so great in this film, plus this film tells a really great theme and message. Presumed Innocence, which Julia lobbied to be in this film because he wanted to work with Harrison Ford and play a smart and ballsy defense attorney for Harrison Ford's character. As he has been accused of rape and murder of a woman he used to have an affair with. This is great stuff from Julia from a fairly slow paced film, but he rocks it, of course. Havana, which this is one of the biggest and major uncredited performances of an actor where his character is actually a big deal for the plot. Here's the funny thing about this. Julia was already famous and a big deal, but the studio didn't want to pay this amount of fees in order to have Raul Julia credited. So his agent said that he's not doing it, but Julia was like, well, no, wait a minute. I still want to do this movie because it's almost a take on Casablanca, set in the 1940s, following Robert Redford as a skilled poker player and makes his way to Havana, Cuba, prepping for a big game that will make or break him. But then he meets Lena Olin, who is married to Raul Julia, then finding out they are revolutionaries, and Redford, being apolitical, is torn between helping the cause or just helping himself. Raul Julia is wonderful here, and it was so crazy to see that he is completely uncredited here. Hollywood, what can you do? Down Came a Blackbird. This was officially the very last film performance of Raul Julia playing a Holocaust survivor who joins a clinic to seek therapy to overcome the horrors 
where he meets Laura Dern, and the two of them blossom into a lovely friendship. But there may be more skeletons in the closet for Julia that Dern quickly suspects. Again, Julia always gives such grace to tormented souls who want to redeem themselves. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, The Burning Season. Subtitled as well as the Chico Mendez story. Obviously based on the true story of environmental activist Chico Mendez who fights with everything he has to protect the Amazon rainforest as well as fight for better wages in Brazil during the 1980s. Like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, this was such a tough choice for me, but I go with this performance as Chico Mendes as number one because this movie showcases Julia's powers in such a great leading light. The movie is his journey. Just like Romero, the film belongs to his thoughts, his conflicts, his decisions, and his actions. I love and appreciate Raul Julia for just having a commanding presence. I feel every time he walked on the screen, he made himself so available and relevant and electrifying that you could not take your eyes off of him. When he speaks, he speaks with purpose. When he moves, he moves with purpose. When you see him take a step, you can feel there is weight to it. And he makes this film a powerful tribute to a man who fought for his values. This was also one of the last films he made before his unfortunate and sudden death in 1994 from stomach cancer. He was very deathly ill while making The Burning Season, and I think that's why it's always saddening to watch him here, because I know for me, I can see him pushing himself, and it affects me much more so knowing that he was struggling with his health while making this film. He received many accolades for his performance here, including the Emmy and Golden Globe for Best Actor in a made-for-TV film, posthumously. It was not at all a Mercy Award, for he gave everything to this performance. Just like he did for all of his roles, he gave a piece of himself. As an actor myself, he is one of my inspirations for acting, just because his projects were so impactful and important, and he gave such beautiful performances in every one of them giving them such humanity and tenderness that real men can gravitate to and learn from and connect with. He left a wonderful legacy to his wife and two sons. Because of his contribution to theater, he was honored into the Theater Hall of Fame on Broadway, inspiring the Benito del Toros, the Jimmy Smiths, the Lynn manuel Mirandas of the world. He gave so much through his humanitarian work with The Hunger Project, the Hispanic Organization of Latin Actors, and for all of that work, the National Endowment for the Hispanic Arts created the Raul Julia Award, on top of a Raul Julia Scholarship, the Raul Julia Founders Award, among many, many other accolades. Among the granddaddy of them all is receiving the honor as of November 21st, 1994. It was declared as Raul Julia Day. That's why on this day of November 21st, 2021, I say Happy Raul Julia Day, and may the world start celebrating with kindness, love, and passion. Good show, old man. Please, ladies and gentlemen, tell me, do you agree with this list? What are your favorite performances from this amazing man? Please comment on this. I'd sincerely love to hear all of your thoughts. Please like this if you truly mean it and share with everybody you know. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Be safe, have fun, make great choices, make someone smile, do something productive today, and really enjoy life. Because today, guys, it's Raul Julia Day today. Mamushka!